very bad. Now, if you're looking to uh, buy a new Volkswagen electric car, you're going to have to wait until 2023, at least after the German car maker admitted it sold out in Europe and the United States. The company uh, which owns Audi, Porsche and Skoda has a backlog of 300,000 orders in Western Europe after persistent supply chain delays. Let's talk to uh, David Bailey, Professor of Business Economics at Birmingham Business School in the UK. Um, David, VW, the world's second largest electric manufacturer, uh, admitting it can't make or sell you an electric car for months and months, and they've had to come clean about it. Just how significant is this? It's a big deal. So basically, if you uh, order a Volkswagen or Audi electric car, you're not going to get it to next year. So will customers really wait that long? I don't think some of them will necessarily. I spoke to a Tesla dealer near me earlier, and they said if you order a Tesla 3 or Y uh, today, you'll get it in September. So clearly, Volkswagen have got some major problems, and I think they'll lose market share, particularly of electric vehicles, because of this. They also said that they will struggle to overtake Tesla as the world's number one electric car maker by 2025, as it had hoped. So clearly... This is a big blow for Volkswagen. But not just confined to Volkswagen. No, no, it isn't. These are factors which are affecting the whole industry. There's really sort of three big things that are coming together. The semiconductor shortage, which we've talked about many times uh, on this program, so the car industry basically can't get enough chips, given that they're being used in just about everything these days. Um, secondly, there's the war in Ukraine which is having an impact on things like components like wiring harnesses, but also through the shortage of neon on chip production and also COVID still. OK, it's not gone away yet. And uh, some of the lockdowns in China, for example, have affected showrooms and also production. So put all those three things together. That's affecting the entire industry. But it's interesting. Volkswagen has been much more affected some, than some other car makers. So if you're sitting in the boardroom at VW, I mean, I just talk us through this. What are the consequences? You're not taking deposits and money's not coming in, presumably, from these potential customers. That's absolutely right. Now, that is affecting the entire industry, but they seem particularly affected by the war in Ukraine and the impact of that on things like wiring harnesses that are made in Ukraine. And they seem very worried about that. I mean, they said that the the supply chain issues in Ukraine are under control, was the phrase that I used today. But equally, they waded in very unusually for a company into this geopolitical sort of uh, issue that's going on by calling for a negotiated settlement to the war. So clearly, the war in Ukraine is having a very big impact on them. And like the rest of the industry, they're having to look at cutting production and really focusing on high margin cars in order to get the maximum return for the limited supply of chips available. Do you sense this shortage of uh, electric cars, in particular for Volkswagen, will simply drive customers back into the arms of uh, diesel and petrol? Good question. Um, I don't think so, because we're seeing very big increases in petrol and diesel prices o over the course of this year. So driving uh, an internal combustion engine vehicle has now become very expensive, in Europe at least, and that is driving a switch over to electric vehicles. So we're seeing a big increase in demand. Remember, in the European Union and in the UK, plug-in sales are likely to take something like 25% of the market this year, and even in China, as high as 20%. So this big transformation of the industry is underway over to electric vehicles, and the problem for Volkswagen is they simply can't produce enough. David, good to see you. Thanks very much for coming on the programme. Uh, Professor David Bailey from uh, Birmingham Business School.